Mark on up. All right. So, one sec here. I just set my timer because uh, I had a long talk with Carl how, how frustrated I get when, uh, when I led AIA, so I don't want to go over it, it'll kill me. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, um, yeah, I, I know you guys are your, your student athletes, you got a lot going on. So I wanted to go over some quick Bible trivia to kind of get us all in the right state of mind here. So, uh, so Bible trivia, here we go. Where is the first tennis match mentioned in the Bible? You guys don't know? Carl, what are you teaching these guys? <laughs> all right, where was the, the, the first tennis match mentioned in the Bible? It was when Joseph served in Pharaoh's court. All right, all right. This one's easy. When was the first baseball game in the Bible? In the beginning. The big inning. Oh. The big inning. Okay. How about how about this one's super easy? Where was Solomon's temple located? You guys know this one. <laughs> no? On the side of his head. Oh. Let's go, guys. All right, all right. So how long how long did Cain hate his brother? As long as he was able. Oh. Let's go. All right, all right, all right, all right. How, how do we know Peter was a rich fisherman? This is an interesting, interesting fact. Hmm? Something about a catch. By his net income. Oh. Come on, guys. All right, and what's the best way to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. Tell him your plans. We know that one. So, that, I've made God laugh a lot in my life. Because he has just wrecked my plans. Um, I promised myself growing up I'd never go to NIU. Uh, I had gone to a bunch of wrestling camps there. I was like, I hate this school. I'm not going there. Uh, so I went to NIU. Uh, uh, I said, I told the coach, like, all right, so uh, I'm going to come here, but I'm not staying in Grant Towers. There, there are these ghetto towers. I won't stay there. So I stayed in Grant Towers. Um, and uh, I thought it was going to be like 6'4. I was waiting for my growth spurt. And uh, all my brothers and my dad all had a growth spurt sophomore year of college. So I was like, I'm going to be a jacked, huge heavyweight. And I wasn't. And everyone told me to go 90, 197. And so uh, I didn't for two years. And then I bumped down to 197 in my last two years. Um, said I wouldn't work for AIA. Here I am. Uh, said I wasn't. Uh, once I decided to work for AIA, I was like, I'm staying at NIU. This is my place. Uh, then I went to Puerto Rico for a year, and then they moved me here. So this is awesome, but I uh, didn't expect that. And uh, I used to think blogging was like for pretentious people, and now I'm a pretentious blogger. Um, and I, I was a closeted frog freak. I love frogs, everything about frogs now. 10 million people know that I have a frog video. So God has changed my plans a lot, um, but I'm, ex I'm excited to be here talking about, today we're gonna talk about Christian fellowship. And I'm especially excited to talk about at AIA about this because God used AIA to bring me into fellowship with Christians and change my entire life. So uh, before I get in, I'm just gonna just gonna pray real quick. God, thank you for Athletes in Action and thank you for using this ministry to bring us into uh, a deeper relationship with you. And thank you that your plans are so much better than ours. I pray that you'll teach us about fellowship and, uh, and help us look more like Christ because of it. In your name I pray, amen. All right, all right. So, um, I've said it a couple times already, fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. So what the heck is fellowship? Let's see if this works. Okay, I got a couple Christianese definitions. Um, if you guys have been in ministry at all, you've heard these. Um, life on life. I'm going to do life on life. <laughs> doing life, right? They used to just be called living. Like, people just used to live their lives. But now we do life. We got, we're just going to love on people. We're going to get together, and we're going to love on each other. Um, we got pouring into each other. That one's especially good. There's one of my friends at, at uh, NIU. She was trying to witness this girl who was not a believer, and she's like, hey, I want to meet up with you every week and pour into you. And the girl's like, okay, that's cool. What do you want to pour into me? <laughs> it's like she had no frame of reference for this kind of understanding. Um, getting plugged in, intentional community, connecting. These are our Christianese words. Um, so let's, let's see some more definitions. Okay, we got Google. Um, friendly association, especially with people who share one's interests. It's kind of helpful. Synonyms, um, companionship, camaraderie, friendship, mutual support. So that's what Google says. 
Uh, let's see what the Bible says. So uh, a biblical understanding of fellowship uh, comes, there's this weird word koinonia. It's been like transliterated, and I can say a bunch of these words to sound smart, but I don't really know a ton. Um, so a definition of that is participation, communion, fellowship, partnership. So we're starting to get a hang of this. Um, and that word is used in Galatians 2.9. And it says, when, G when James and Cephas, this is Paul speaking, when James and, and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave the right hand of fellowship to Barnabas and me, that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. And that, that's so epic, the right hand of fellowship. So when I think of that, is that not the right hand of fellowship? That is epic. Yeah, but that's not what we're talking about. Um, so my understanding... Just, just to kind of sum it up, this is what we're going to be talking about tonight. John 13, 15 says, By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So Christian fellowship is about Christians coming together to show each other Christ's love. So that's what we're talking about. That's Christian fellowship. <laughs> one does not simply fellowship alone. Um, we are called... We're called to fellowship, we need to fellowship, and we get to fellowship. So if you don't learn any, anything else tonight, those are the three things you need to learn. We're called to it, we need it, and we get to do it. So right away, I got a ton to read for you. Um, so I'm just going to blast through this, and then we'll, we'll kind of summarize it. Therefore, remember that at one time, you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands, remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who, were once, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together to a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. And we should just end it there. That's crazy. So, there's a lot there, but I wonder if you pick up on how it's both, all, we, together, together, together. And in our American radical individuals, and we don't have a framework for that, because we were born in the revolution, and it's don't tread on me, and I'm an American individual, and leave me alone. I have my own autonomy. And the Bible doesn't talk like that. Like, it gives the foundation for individual liberty. That's awesome. But the Bible talks about us being joined together as one. It talks about our position as Christians is, is a call to fellowship. It's not like, oh, well, just me and God. It, yeah, but us. We're called together as one kingdom, as a family of God, fellow heirs with Christ, holy temple made of living stones, members of a new covenant. So our position as Christians is united together through Christ. We don't get to negotiate. We don't get to pick and choose. I used to do that all the time. And I was like, well, I got my relationship with God, and I don't really like these weirdos. I'm cool, and they're not. And I learned that's not the case. But anyways, we're called to, to be together. Um, that's, that's our position in Christ. So the cross, I love to think about it as vertical and horizontal. Right? So like you see the, the, the vertical beam in the cross. We're reconciled back to God. The horizontal part, we're reconciled to each other. Jews and Gentiles who hated each other are one in Christ. So that means that Christians, we don't, we don't make distinctions between people. You guys are my brothers and sisters in Christ. Like that's, that's awesome. That's crazy. That's fellowship. Because of what Christ has done, positionally, we are called to fellowship. Um, and we need fellowship. Man, so long. Okay, we have a need for, for fellowship. 
And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. I'm going to jump down to 16. From whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. So we need fellowship. So positionally, because of Christ, we're called to fellowship. And that, would, that should be enough. Like, if God just said, yeah, I'm, you're, you have to have fellowship with each other. Well, he's God, so we, we better listen to him. But he gives us reasons for it, too. I love that. Just like practically, like, we have to have each other. We've all been gifted in different ways. And so I used to think, like, yeah, we have spiritual gifts, and that's so cool, and we get to, like, we, we get to hold on to those. And the more I learn it, it's like we've been gifted for each other. Some people are really great at teaching, and we have to learn from them. And some people are really hospitable. And some people are just friendly all the time. And I don't understand those people. But we need them. We have to have them. Um, so we need fellowship. We have to have each other's gifts. Uh, Proverbs 18.1 says, One who isolates himself pursues selfish desires. And he rebels against all sound judgment. And so I used to think, okay, so I'm not going to bother them with my stuff. And, and, you know, I'm going to be selfless in not joining in their group. But that's, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you're being selfish. You're seeking your own selfish desires by not entering in to fellowship. You're rebelling against all sound judgment because the Bible says we need each other. The Bible says we've been reconciled to each other as brothers and sisters. And so if we're going to listen to the word of God, then we have to see that we're made for fellowship and we actually need each other in this. We're the body of Christ and we need all the members. Um, some people are more logical and they want to sit down and figure things out. Other people are more pragmatic and they want to just get going and see what works. And other people are more emotional and they care about people's feelings. It's like, if we focus in on one of those, we're going to be lopsided. We're going to be a body without legs or without arms. But we need each other. We need the emotional people and we need the smart people and we need the people who are going to get stuff done. It's really cool that God has blessed us in that way. And it reminds me of um, D.L. Moody, if you guys have heard of him, he's, a, he's an awesome preacher, and he's in Chicago, so that's my boy. Um, Moody has this, this, gives this really awesome analogy of coal. And so this one guy, I don't, I don't know if he's atheist or whatever, he didn't want to go to church. And so he's asking Moody, why do I have to go to church if I'm a Christian? You know, why can't I just have this with, with God? And Moody doesn't say anything. He just gets up, goes over to the fireplace with his fired tongs, grabs a coal out of the fire, and puts it on the floor. And he goes back and sits by the guy. He doesn't say anything. And then as a couple minutes go by, the coal starts getting colder and colder and darker. And eventually, it, it's out. It's not hot anymore. And the guy goes, okay, I get it. Because that's the Christian life. Mm -hmm. the, we're, we're all coals. And together, we're heating each other up. We're encouraging each other. We're, we're growing in our faith. We're bumping off our rough edges. But apart, what good is a coal by itself? You can't roast a marshmallow over that. That's what all coals are really meant for nowadays anyways. But you can't do that. It's good for nothing. And so us by ourselves, that's not what we're called to be. That's not who we're called to be. That's not good for us. It's not healthy. It's actually even rebellious is what the Bible says. So positionally, as Christians, it's not an option. We're called to fellowship. Pragmatically, we have to have each other. We don't have all the skills we need. God has gifted us specifically for each other. We've been blessed to be a blessing. And so that goes with local church as well. You know, if you guys aren't plugged in, I would encourage you. There's a church out there that's looking for one of you with the gifts that you have, and they're missing out on their fingers or their feet. Their body isn't healthy right now because you're supposed to be there. Encourage, and you actually need them as well. And, the, and same thing with, with AIA, you know? We, we're together, we're a body, and so we're called to each other. I know we got stuff come, um, comes up, you got practice, all this stuff, but it, if you know you're supposed to be somewhere, and you feel God put it in your heart, you should be there. So, positionally we have to, <clears throat> pragmatically we need to, but the coolest thing is that we get to. So fellowship isn't just a command or a position. Um, it isn't just a um, it isn't just necessary, but fellowship is actually a privilege. So 
I think I have a shorter verse. There we go. A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. I've experienced that in my own life. Some of my best friends I've met through AIA, some of my best friends are old dudes from church. It's like, I would never want to hang out with those guys. And now I see, like, I need their wisdom. I need an older, older guy just to tell me to shut up sometimes. So helpful. It's so helpful when someone's like, you're wrong, dude. That's just wrong. And they can explain it to me because they've been through it and they've made these mistakes so I don't have to make them. I have like 10 father figures now. I have older brothers in the faith. I have younger brothers in the faith that look up to me and they want to know stuff from me. I have little sisters in the faith. I have big sisters in the faith. But we're a Christian community and that's a privilege. Like if you guys, if it were up to me, you guys would stone me. Like if you knew all the thoughts that I had, it's insane, but because of Christ, because Jesus died for our sins, we are united to each other, and we don't judge each other. That's crazy. We're, we're called to each other, and we get to have this kind of friendship that goes deeper than anything you'll see out in the world. And none of you can do something that's worse. No one, none of you can do something worse to me than what I've done to God. So how can I not forgive you? For sinning against me. I'm called to do that. And he's forgiven me so I can forgive you so we can have even better relationships. And Christ says, you'll, you'll know my disciples by how they love each other. So we get, we get to have these friendships. We get to have these relationships. It's a privilege. So I have more in common with you than a lot of my own relatives. You know, and we're, we're connected by blood. And you and I are connected by Christ's blood. <coughs> That's so much stronger. That's amazing. Um, so I want to I want to encourage you guys to take advantage of that, and take advantage of, of your pastors and the IA staff here and um, your your Christian coaches. Like s- step into that position, and and begin living. Continue to live as brothers and sisters in the faith. <clears throat> so I want to I want to also encourage you guys. As Christians, we need to have an older person in our life. It's so helpful, especially for our age. I'm only 25. I don't know if you guys <coughs> think of me as like super old or anything. Maybe I am, but I think of me as you guys. So trying to fit in here. Um, but we, millennials, I can say millennials. Millennials, we need older people in our lives. The world is crazy. The world is changing. We need someone in our lives to say, yeah, the world wasn't like this. Or, or the world was bad, and your generation is getting some stuff right. But we need that older voice that's been through more stuff. So as a Christian, look for someone who can disciple you. Look for someone who can help mentor you. And also, you need someone that's your own age, that you can kind of let your hair down with and be yourself. And he's not going to judge you. Um, but just to, just to hang out, you need Christian friends as well. I'm not saying that we need to isolate ourselves and be weirdo fundamentalists or anything like that. But I'm saying that you need that some of your closest friends that better be Christians they're your brothers and sisters in Christ. And as Christians, okay, so we got someone older than us, someone our own age, we need to be pouring into someone else. Pouring in, I, I said it, dang it. <laughs> we need to be discipling someone else. Um, shoot. <laughs> yeah, I knew I was gonna do it. We need to be passing on those lessons, right? We need, we're older than some people too. We're older than high schoolers, older than middle schoolers. We're maybe, we're even further along in our faith than some upperclassmen, stuff like that. We need to be sharing our faith. We need to be living it out and experiencing that and trusting the Holy Spirit to help us and guide us. We need to live and step into that Christian community. So, three things that I talked about that we gotta remember. We're called to fellowship, right? We have to have fellowship. We need fellowship and we get to. It's a fellowship is a privilege. It's all right. I didn't need it anyway. Um, so fellowship is a privilege. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it bring it home for us. <clears throat> because of our position in Christ, we're called to fellowship. It's actually who we are. It's actually who we are. We are the family of faith. Since God has wired us and gifted us differently, we have a deep need for fellowship. We are blessed to be a blessing. <clears throat> and because of Christ, we get to be united to God and united to each other. And so step into your call. Lean on your brothers and sisters. 
And thank God for Christian fellowship. It's a big deal. It's awesome. Because of Christ, we get to be a family. Because the cross is vertical, we get to live in love horizontally. So when you see the cross, remember that. Um, and something I always, we're doers, right? Athletes are doers. So some of you guys are going to leave here and be like, okay, I need to go do this. Get after this. Like, we, we, you can't do it without, without the Holy Spirit either. You can't do it without God. So if you're going to do something, then pray about it. And say, Lord, I, I, want, I want this. I want to experience that, that kind of deep connection with, with Christians. I want to be able to trust each other. Help me do that. And of course he's going to help you do that. He wants to do that as well. So, so continue to pray and, and continue to be vulnerable. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard. And someone is going to let you down and they may hurt you. But remember, that there's nothing that someone can do to you that's worse than what you've done to Christ. If he's forgiven you, then you're called to forgive each other. And that's a big part of fellowship is being able to get over yourself and be able to forgive each other. And that's how trust happens. And because of Christ, we get to do that. So I'm going to pray for us. And then someone's going to come up and direct us. God, thank you for fellowship. Thank you that because of Christ, um, because the cross is vertical and horizontal, we get to have unity with each other. I pray that you would build Ohio State AIA. You would build these athletes in fellowship. That they would be able to love each other and trust each other and point each other towards your beautiful son more and more and more. Lord, I pray that you would give us boldness to help grow the fellowship and to be bold with our roommates and our teammates. And you could, um, I pray that, that we would see a revival here, Lord. I thank you for what's going on right now. I pray that you would build up this ministry even more. For your sake, Lord, not for AIA, but for your kingdom and for our family. In your name I pray, amen. amen.